welcome everyone so on 1st october 2019 we are starting our project neuro is other diseases which a brain can experience in today's session we are going to observe how neuroimaging works what is a neuroimaging data set how we can quickly create a business plan in order to complete this product one of the most important thing which we will discuss today is how we can achieve project goals in industry 90% of the projects generally fail we have to learn the techniques so that we can achieve our goals 100% now once we are done with that once we get to know the techniques which can help us achieve our project goals we are going to start with google collaboratory we are going where we are going to access brain mri data set and we are going to perform technical implementation of neuroimaging post that we are going to explore the data sets where we are going to get brain mri images from various brain tumor or brain mri capturing laboratories worldwide and finally we are going to have the team presentation so this is the objective of our today's session so let's quickly get started now in order to get started with the project introduction we have taken a base reference and this base reference refers to machine learning for neuro imaging using scikit learn as you all would have explored this research paper so this research paper says we'll quickly go to the conclusion so in industry whenever we start development of a product what exactly we do first of all instead of reading the paper from the top i would generally like to read a paper from the conclusion in conclusion i will be able to quickly extract the information out if i like the conclusion of the paper then i will go to the experimental section wherein i would like to identify what all equations are available so in this paper researchers have illustrated with simple examples how machine learning techniques can be applied to fmri data using certain libraries like scikit learn library in python in order to tackle neuroscientific problems then they have performed techniques like encoding and decoding which can rely on supervised learning to link brain images with the stimuli and finally they performed unsupervised learning where they have extracted structure functional networks brain regions in order to identify information like uh, let's say if we have a brain image if we have to encounter tumor then what kind of tumors are available so we can identify these sub regions so we are going to understand how this technology works and how we are going to create a machine learning or a deep learning product an ai product for neuroimaging before we start i would like to quickly let you all know what is a brain mri okay so we are going to quickly check what is brain mri there is a very nice website available i believe this is healthline.com wherein you can have the brain the brain mri video i would like to quickly show you one uh, resource which i really like so let me just quickly go here uh, okay 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 so we need to get magnetic resonance images mri so initially as you all know mri stands for magnetic resonance imaging magnetic resonance imaging is a medical imaging technique used in radiology to form pictures of the anatomy and the physiological process of the body so what does this mean this means brain mri images which is known as magnetic resonance imaging technique can be applied on any part of the body it is not mandatory that it is only used for brain you can perform analysis on any part of the body which is the best part now i would like to quickly check back uh, there was a very nice video which i have uh, recently explored so i think here is the video nibib nih.gov let me just quickly check back in if i have got the right resource let me quickly check back and show you 
yeah so this one is this is the video which i uh, was keen to show you all let me just share this video url i have copied the video url and i have shared that video url on your project okay how mri scan works this is the first thing which you guys need to understand because once you guys are clear with the fundamentals then you will be easily able to use artificial intelligence technology you will be able to use mri images of different parts of the body and you will be able to perform deep learning and you will be able to perform prediction on it so that you can identify in case if a person is experiencing any brain disease or any disease in any part of the body you will be able to predict that out so i'm playing this video for you all let's have a look so the national institute of biomedical has released this video wherein you are going to understand how brain mri scan works let's have a look Are you all able to see the video? Can you please confirm me on chat if you guys are able to watch the video? Great, great, great. So let's go for it. Protons, which are abundant in the human body. So you can see that initially they said human body is composed of protons. Okay, this is one very important part which you guys need to understand. Protons are abundant in human body. all protons spin creating a small environment here so they travel inside the body so you need to understand what exactly happens on a proton when any further technology like um, magnetic resonance and electric resonance whenever it is passed to a human body so let's quickly check back the science behind the mri images All protons spin, creating a small magnetic charge. When a strong magnetic field is introduced, as is the case in an MRI machine, the protons align with that field. The MRI technician. Okay, so can you see this part? So generally, what happens is in the human body, protons are uh, traveling; they roam around inside a human body, and whenever a magnetic resonance is passed, okay. whenever a magnetic resonance is passed due to that what happens is this protons change their direction okay so till now it has said somewhat like that let's see what then introduces a radio frequency pulse that disrupts the proton and forces it either into a 90 degree or 180 degree realignment with the static magnetic field Since the radio frequency pulse pushes the proton against its nature, once this pulse is turned off, the protons realign with their magnetic field, releasing electromagnetic energy along the way. The MRI is able Okay, that is here. So here is something which is known as an MRI image. So as you all can observe here, your MRI images can be taken for the brain or else any part of the body. So it could be your lungs, it could be your heart, it could be your pancreas it could be your liver it could be your intestines any part of the body can be identified with mri images okay so let's say as you all know healthcare is very important today more than 500 million dollars have been invested in the startups for healthcare so in case if you are ready with a deep learning product it could be a website it could be a solution and if you if we sell that to the healthcare market we are going to grab a lot of money because we are we are sharing a lot of uh, uh, because we will be sharing an application which will be serving a lot of people okay because a lot of people suffer from various problems in heart in brain in lungs and various other places so if you have a algorithm or if you have an equation which can precisely calculate the problems inside a human body then your applications can be integrated with the devices where brain mri work moreover you can also create different solutions which can be it could be low cost solutions which can be used by any clinic or uh, it can be used by any hospital so that diagnosis can be done as soon as possible and people can save their lives 
and when you will be selling this service to people you are going to get a lot of value in return and this value will generate a lot of wealth for you and if you have wealth a lot of your problems will be sorted i believe so now so this is one one part of uh, how brain mri is used and let's just quickly complete that video able to detect this energy and is able to differentiate various tissues based on how quickly they release energy after the pulse is turned off okay guys so i believe you guys are clear with this stuff how brain mri works and mri actually stands for magnetic resonance imaging okay now so you guys have reached till here you guys now understand what is an mri image now how we are going to grab this mri data okay in order to grab this mri data there is a website there is a challenge which is happening it is known as brain tumor segmentation okay it's known as brats data set okay you can call it as brats 2019 data so you can quickly grab a copy of the latest data which is available at this website brain tumor segmentation challenge and you can find the data here on this website med.upe.n.edu so you can go here you can go to this website i will be sharing the link to this data one of the best part of this data is it has been collected from a from a lot of agencies and it is verified by actual professional radiologists okay so the data is authentic and if you will be able to create a solution out of it that is going to be really helpful for the people now so what i would like to take i would like to take you guys here uh, wherein you will be able to see the reference pages what all uh, what all libraries have been used and what all data this this page contains so i'm sharing that on your fellow guards okay so let me just quickly update that second thing is so you're going to get the data set for mri images so data set for mri images will be available over here you will be able to grab the data what this data contains so this data contains four types of images so your data contains multi model scans and these are available as nii files now what do you understand with nii files and i would like to quickly define that so nii stands for neuro imaging images okay these are the images which are three dimensional in nature okay these are 3d images so what you can do with 3d images you can see a brain from three sides on three different planes which means x plane y plane and z plane and these nii files contain certain information so this contains native brain images which means the original brain images then a contrasted brain image which is known as t1gd then you are going to get a t2 image which is going to be the segmentation the segmented image and you have a fluid attenuated inversion recovery image which we call as flare and i am going to show you what these images looks like okay so before we proceed further i would like to share another link with all of you so that you will be able to understand the data which will be downloaded now here i would like to take you to the data reference i believe the data reference is available here here so the contributions are available over here and there is a paper latest brat summarizing paper so i would like to give you this address wherein you are going to get explanations about the data so information about data set is available at this paper i i request you all to open this paper so that you will be able to understand what kind of information is available so when you open this paper this is also a research paper where information about brain mri images is available what all data a brain mri image can have is available over here 
So there was a paper known as identifying the best machine learning algorithms for brain tumor segmentation, progression assessment, and overall survival prediction. So you can go to the PDF file here. As you all can see at the top right corner, there is a link to download the PDF file. You can click on this PDF. Once you click on this PDF, you're going to get this file open. So this could be a big file. You all can quickly download that file. And within this file, we have images available wherein you will be able to understand how brain images looks like and uh, from where you can quickly download the data. So I'm going to share the data with all of you. Let me just share the link to download this data. This is a big data. It is approximately one point. Uh, this is approximately 2 GB, 2.4 GB of data, which you will be using for analysis. And let me quickly give you link to download this data set. Now here to download this data set, I'm sharing a registration status file with all of you, wherein the links to download the data set is available. And here is the link. So I'm sharing the link with all of you here under project manager card. So you all will be able to download, download training data here. Okay. So you all can download the training data from here and mind it. This is, I believe 2.3 GB or something. Okay. So these are the images. It would be better if you can download it on cloud. Because if you will download it on your local machine, again, it may take a lot of time. So I have got this data set downloaded. Once you guys are done with the download, let me know. Initially, I would like to show you where the data is available. So I'm going to go to Putty. I have a cloud server available, which I would like to load. I would like to connect to the server. I would like to open my shell the cloud platform on this cloud platform under where www.html directory I have got this data set available. So you all can access this data set from my cloud server. Also, I'm going to share you the link of my cloud server. Now here, once you will download the data set, you're going to get the zip file downloaded. And if you do an ls command, ls hyphen l, you can quickly check back that this is approximately 2.5 GB of data. Okay, the zip file. So just to quickly show you, once you do a list command, you are going to unzip your data set. Once you guys have done unzip, I would like to take you to the data set here. Within this data set, you're going to have four files, survival mapping and name mapping so that you can identify the patients and what patients are suffering from a brain tumor and what patients are not suffering from the tumor. This, you can open that in a collaboratory and I'm going to show you that how we do that. There are two types of images in this, which contains global information and local contextual information. So there are two directories, HGG and LGG, which you are going to understand. Now, let's say if I would like to take you to an HDG directory, you can see that there will be a lot of directories available. Here, each directory actually represents a patient. Okay. And once you open any patient's data, let's say I would like to open this patient's data, TCIA 02135.1, name of the patients are represented like this so as to maintain confidentiality about the patient. Okay. So you guys can see in a real data set, there will be confidentiality and real names won't be available of the patients. Okay. Now let's say, so if I go to BRATS 19 TCIA 02 and if I go to 119, oh sorry, 135. So here within this directory, now you all can see there are five kinds of images in this directory. Okay. So first image is a flare, a flare image, which is the fluid attenuated image. What is the meaning of this flare? What is the meaning of T1? What is the meaning of T2? 
what is the meaning of segmented image and t1e i'm going to quickly let you know so now you should consider the scenario that you have got a mri data set within this mri data set you have data of multiple patients every patient has five types of images okay and what are these images i'm going to show you that so now i'm taking you to the data set wherein you guys will be able to understand what kind of information is available in a neuroimaging data and how we are going to perform deep learning on it so i'm getting a couple of queries let me just quickly check back oh i'm um, okay 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 just give me a moment let me just quickly share my screen again thanks for telling me okay guys here so let me just quickly record that back again so what i did let me just quickly complete i'm going to let you know the process again so we were here i've got this data set downloaded now what i will do i will open a shell that is putty shell this is an ssh tool using this i am going to connect my cloud server i am going to select my kali server this kali server is running on this url 13.232.226.32 i would like to send that url to all of you on chat okay we are going to open a connection once we are going to open a connection we are going to go for abcd 12345 i am going to log into my linux server over this linux server i'll go to my bare world wide web html directory now within this html directory you all can see that i have got the data set available so this data set is a training.zip data set okay micai brats 2019 training.zip this data set is approximately 2.6 gb or 2. yeah 6 gb so now you can see that here you can see the size of this zip file so once you guys extract this zip file what you are going to get so once you guys extract this you are going to get a brats 2009 data training directory you can quickly go to this directory micc ai within this directory you are going to have four files okay and these four files are survival data which lets us let us know how many uh, for how many days a patient has survived who was suffering from brain tumor here we have the mapping data wherein we got to know uh, whether a person has tumor or not then we have got two information like hdd information and lgg information which i am going to let you know as soon as we progress further in this program now here what are you going to do let's say you have gone to the hdd directory now within hdd directory you all can see there are a lot of directories available over here now in this directory what happens is every patient has a number associated with it okay for confidentiality reasons original name of the patient is not displayed the data is enclosed with a numerical number now so these are patients data every individual patient is denoted with a number okay so now what am i going to do i'm going to show you the data of a patient so let's say i'm going to show you a data of a patient which is brats tcia let's say tmc 300141 Let's say I'm going to open data of one patient. That's going to be class 19. I'm going to open TMC. I'm going to open for T double zero one four dot one. So once I open that, okay. If I take a list, you can see that we have got five images here. So for every individual patient, you will be having five types of images in the data set. The first image is the T one image, which is the native original image of a brain. second one is t1ce which is a contrasted image third one is a t2 image which you are going to understand which means enhancing tumor then you uh, this is non enhancing tumor then you have the flare which is the complete area of the tumor yeah, with, this is known as a fluid attenuated tumor and you have a segmentation 
image okay so which means which identifies the complete core area of uh, the the brain tumor so i'm going to show you how these images looks like these images have the format nii.gz which actually stands for neuro imaging images okay so let's see so we have got that now i'm going to take you back and i will show you how you are going to access this data set so what we'll do we are here we'll quickly go back to the next step so till now you guys are clear with what type of data you have got so now i'm going to show you the data how it looks like what these nii images are so you can quickly go back to uh, i'll let you know the page number so you all can open this directory and you all can go to page number 8 okay on page number 8 you guys have this information let me just quickly broaden it so that you guys will be able to grab much information about it okay here so now as you all can see this is a complete brain mri image you can consider this image as an nii image okay now within this brain image we have a couple of things first we have a fluid we call it as a whole tumor the complete area of the tumor in the brain okay can you all see that so in this original image this is the complete area of the tumor okay we call this as edema or invasion post that then we have a tumor core okay the core tumor so this area is a core tumor okay the non enhancing part this this is a core tumor which actually happens inside the brain so we call it as a non enhancing tumor then third you have a enhancing tumor okay so there is a blue part here which is known as the enhancing tumor and this enhancing tumor has a necrosis in it okay the necrosis is the the deepest part of the tumor the the necrotic component we call it as okay so you have enhancing tumor and within the enhancing tumor you have the core which is known as the necrosis okay now you i believe you have got that you need to identify this tumor section with machine learning now what all these images are so first of all you can see that there is a whole tumor image the whole tumor image is known as is yellow in color and this data is known as a t2 flare data okay so this is t2 flare the whole tumor then there is another value which is red in color and this is known as the tumor core okay this tumor core is known as t2 which is available in our brain mri data set then what we have we have the third information t1 gd and the green which is the enhancing necrosis tumor so this is your uh, the, the core part the green part is your uh, there is one t1 gd which is blue in color which is the enhancing tumor this one the enhancing tumor and then you have a core green which is your uh, the appropriate necrotic tumor okay so these are some of the images which are available okay are you guys clear with the stuff that what kind of images would be available now once you guys are done with that now i would like to take you to a quick script to show you how this works but we will be working on the script in next week but so as to let you guys know what you will be doing in i would like to take you to my project so i've gone to my project here google collaboratory okay i'm going to share a link with all of you you can quickly start with neuro imaging project by the time i'm going to quickly get the url for you uh, for my server let's call it as a neuro imaging project okay so we are going to start this neuro imaging project 
you're going to connect to Google Collaboratory, Google Compute Engine backend. Once you guys are connected, just let me know. I would like to quickly share the IP address of my server. So IP address of my server is 13.232.226, wherein you guys can see I have got the zip file and I have also extracted the training data. Okay. So you guys can click on it. You'll be able to get all this name mapping.csv file and gg file and all that stuff. Okay. So initially you guys can read name mapping and survival mapping. So we'll quickly get started with data gathering. When you got this project, first of all, what we are going to do, we are going to import pandas as PD. You're going to call this on, you're going to run this library. You all can code along with me, pd.read underscore CSV. You're going to pass this data for mapping CSV. Let's call it as name mapping data. Okay, let's call it as name data. I'm going to call it as name data. And I believe you all are comfortable with Python programming because you guys are already done with your supervised learning. So once you do that, you can see that you have got your data here. Now, just to quickly let you all know what all you have got inside the data here. So I'm going to quickly show the names of columns in data. This is going to be something like I've got name data and I'm going to get the columns. So you can see that within name data, you have some information. And this information includes the grade. The grade is HGG or LGG. It is a categorical data. Then we have the data available for three years, for 2017, for 2018, and for 2019. So we have the data available for three years, okay? We will be working on the data for 2019 because this is the latest data set which is available. Okay. And what it contains, it contains the patient number. Okay. So the values which you are seeing here, which is available in the data set here, if I show you the head. So I'm going to print the statement print. And I'm going to quickly show you the top two rows from the data just to, sorry, this is name data. I'm going to call this name underscore data. So once you do that, you can quickly see you have this information available for, for the brats one. This is the subject ID 2019. So the name which is mentioned over here, brats 19, CBI, CA, AB, this belongs to a patient number. And once you go into this directory, you're going to get five specific images for every patient which you have to analyze. I hope this is clear to all of you. Now, so once you've got the data, similarly, you can grab the data for survival data also. So let's copy that and I'm going to read survival data. Okay. Now, when it comes to reading survival data, what you're going to do, you're going to read underscore CSV. You're going to provide survival data. Let's call it as survival underscore data. And I'm going to quickly print the columns, survival underscore data dot columns. And I would like to quickly check back survival underscore data dot, uh, sorry, I would like to get the top two rows from here. So once we run that, you can see that it contains age of the patient, the ID of the patient, and for how many days the patient survived. Okay, so you have three types of information, ID of the patient. Within this ID, you have five images, which you're going to read and analyze. Then you've got the age of the patient, which is 60 years of age, and you have survival. So the patient survived for 289 days. So somewhat like this, you're going to this information you're going to get. So this is the, the data which is in text format so that you will be able to identify technical information or a structural information about a patient. But now we'll go towards unstructured information, which is an image. 
So let's say I would like to quickly go to HDG image and let's say I would like to read the image for this patient for BRATS 2019 CBICA AAB1 who's, uh, which, is a, which is first on the list on the name mapping and the survival mapping, okay? So let's quickly check back. So when I click on this patient, I get five files, okay? So as you all can see, we have five files. We have T1, which is the native image. Then you have the flare image. This flare image is the whole tumor. Okay, I'll write that here. It's the whole tumor. Then you have the segmentation image, segmentation image. Then you have native image, native image, which means the original brain image. Then you have T1CE, which is the enhanced uh, tumor. And finally, you have T2, which is the necrosis. Okay, the necrotic or cystic data. So you have got all these five kind of uh, images available, which are going to be used for analysis. I hope you guys are able to understand what am I saying. Now, what am I going to do? Initially, I would like to show you the player data. So I'm going to copy this link address. I'll go to neuroimaging. And what am I going to do? I'm going to quickly perform certain analysis. So for neuroimaging, you guys will be glad to know. We have a very nice library available for neuroimaging in Python. And that is known as NI image. Okay. So I would like to show you the library. Sorry, it is NI Learn. NI Learn Python. Okay. So NI Learn is a machine learning for neuroimaging in Python library. You can quickly go back to this library. You can get back to this library and you can explore what all great things you have here. Okay. So by the time it loads up, let me just quickly perform some analysis for you. Okay, here. So I'll go to the index, I'll go to neuroimaging, and I would like to import, import, and I learn. So you can run that. You can see that by default, and I learn is not available on Jupyter Notebook. So you need to import that, okay? So what you can do is, first of all, you can quickly download that using PIP install and I learn. So this library will be collected on Jupyter Notebook and all other libraries like NI Babel, NumPy, BZ2, and I learn all these packages will be installed. So we have got the latest version and I learned 0.5.2 installed on our collaboratory. So if you don't have, if you don't have uh, the library available, you can quickly install that. Now what all and I learn can do and I learn can do a lot of stuff and you will be glad to use this library. But let me just quickly get started with a couple of functions, which could be like really interesting to you. So first, will download the image. So, uh, so will it exist on our Jupyter package after the notebook is closed? No. Once the runtime is recycled, the data will be lost. So you have to keep the data on a cloud server wherein you can analyze it, like the way I have kept it on my AWS server. Okay. So there was a question. Sir, will the data exist on our Jupyter packages after the notebook is closed? No. Once your online Jupyter notebook is recycled, the data will be lost. So there are two ways you can do that. Either you can go to the server, you can go back to the parent directory and you can download the zip file on your local machine or else you can set up an AWS server. You can download the 2.5 GB of data on the server to be able to access it through any way, either in local Anaconda or else in Jupyter notebook. The packages we are loading using PIP that will also may not be available. So you need to keep this code. And when you come next time, you have to click on runtime and run all, then the packages has to be downloaded. Okay. If you are running on a local machine, then you need 
then the packages will be available once you are done with the installation. Okay. Now, and if you are working on a project on an AWS server, then once you have downloaded the packages, they will be available for all this. Now, we'll go to download the image. So you can quickly go, you can execute this Linux command, wget, and you can specify the this URL. So what I did, I've gone to this file, I've right click here, I have copied this link address, and I have pasted this link address here. So once I have pasted this link address for NIIGZ, and when I run that, you can see that I'm going to get that file downloaded. Okay. So this is a 1.7 MB file, which has been downloaded on my server. And now I'm going to check that. You can also explore the files here at the left hand side. You can see that your Brats TS19 CPI CA file has been downloaded here, which is of 1.7 MB. Okay. So Jupyter gives you this feature at the left hand side. You can open the left pane and you can check back all your files, which are available. So I've got this file downloaded and I'm going to read it now and I'm going to use an I learn to make a graph out of it. Okay. So I have got this and I learn and uh, before I execute it, I would like to show you some functions on the library here. So this is the machine learning for neuroimaging in Python library. Now here, what you can do is you can get started with the first steps wherein you can plot the graphs. Okay. So you can quickly go back to the first steps. You can also go back to the, uh, you can also go back to all the individual steps, which, we, which, which can be done. So here is the step to get started. So you can quickly use an I learn, you can import a library known as plotting from there and using plotting library, you can execute various functions like plotting a glass brain, you can plot a smooth image. You can plot a normal image. So let's see what we are going to do. Okay. And there are various other ways apart from plotting. You can also use 3D and 4D images, which you can print. So I would like to quickly take you to the user guide here, which is like a pretty good reference example, wherein you can understand each thing step by step. And we will be exploring all these options, like how encoding will be done, how decoding will be done, how image data will be extracted, how plotting will be done. So first I would like to plot the brain data in a graphical structure so that you guys will be able to know what all we can do. So now here you can see that there are a lot of, a lot of images, a lot of functions are available over here, which we can plot and which we can grab. So I'm going to use two functions today. One will be plot the image, which is going to give me a given image from frontal axial or lateral position like x y z axis as well as i'm going to execute one more which is a stack map okay so let's see how we're going to do that so i'll go to neuro imaging code and i'm going to import from and i learn i'm going to import plotting okay so now you can see that i have got my plotting library loaded now using this plotting function I'm going to call a lot of functions like plot. So these are all the options which you can refer from the reference as well as you can use in collab as well. So first thing which I would like to do is I would like to plot the image which is available in the NII file. So I'll go here. If you would like to check what all you can do with this plotting function, you can quickly use question mark so as to get the help. Now here you can see that this will plot cuts of a given image from X axis, Y axis, Z axis, and all the three axes. So you have to pass the NII image and you can give various options like display mode could be ortho, it could be X, Y, Y, Z, Z, X, or any, any of the modes you can say, you can see an image from any of the axes. Uh, post display mode, you can specify sagittal mode, coronal mode, or ortho mode. So mostly ortho mode will help you have all the images from X, Y, Y, Z, and Z, X axis. So three dimensional images you can easily represent. So that's what you're going to get. So let's have a quick look how we are going to do that. So you're going to use plot image. Now you're going to use Bratz image. I'm going to quickly search for Bratz image. I've used BR, I have clicked the tab key and I've got Bratz CBICA AAB, the file which I've downloaded. And if I run this file, now you guys will be able to see an object has been created here. The image will be loaded 
once you have got matplotlib inline uploaded so i would like to add a new code cell which i would like to run before this plotting library or else within this library only you can execute that so let me do one thing so before loading this library you can call matplotlib inline once and once you run that now you are going to get the image loaded in a graphical format okay guys so now you can see you have got your first image loaded and this image is a three dimensional image we have got the image from x axis from the y axis and from the z axis and in general terms you can see that you have got the left hand side of the brain the right hand side of the brain and the front hand side of the brain left and right okay so i believe you all are able to identify what image is this and if you would like to see the real patient so the patient would look somewhat like this let me just quickly show you an image which i have collected for all of you uh, our title image let's say i'm going to show you that that is like i think here is the image so now okay i should use a better image i believe let me just quickly get back to an image downloads or that's in my office hack with a hack with a campaign marketing uh here maybe okay so i believe we forgot where i have kept the image okay i have kept that here uh brain mri let me sort that by date okay so i believe somehow i lost the image so i'll show that from here itself so you can see that there is a guy uh, here and here this guy is within the brain mri scanning machine wherein mri images will be taken so here you can see that you can see this image from the left hand side the brain from the right hand side and the brain from the front hand side okay so this is the real image which has been taken of a user and now this image can be depicted in python like this moreover you can you can make a better plot so there is one more library which you can use plotting dot plot underscore stat image okay which is going to give you a stat map which looks a little which looks like little beautiful and a lot more information you can extract out of this function so once i run that you're going to get another graph loaded here so this is the another image so this is like a graphical plot you can change the threshold and you can quickly identify uh in what section the tumor exists so in this image you can see that this is the flare this is the whole tumor area okay so this is the whole tumor area which you can see from different sides and now your objective is to identify other sub regions and predict the tumor so guys i believe you guys got to know a lot of information about how brain mri will be done and this is how you are going to execute the project okay so inform all your friends so that they will be available during the project sessions and they will be able to grab a lot of knowledge about how neuroimaging will be done and how real time industrial products will be made so today we have covered a few things from our discussions like we have got a project introduction we have got to know about how technical implementation of neuroimaging will be done these two things we have covered in the next session we are going to cover how you are going to make a business plan how you are going to create project goals and how will you be able to achieve them you are going to explore the data sets and you are we are going to have the team presentations okay so be prepared with your project pre presentation so that we can have it in the next uh, next meeting and the next meeting i believe we are having this next meeting on uh, on this date so next tuesday we will be meeting and next tuesday it is 8th of october so we'll have our next meeting on 8th of october wherein we are going to proceed further in the program by the time you guys can explore and i learn library which could be a lot of help for you so thank you guys 
for being available thank you for watching